But now we have to move on to our next story. And this has to deal with something that's very uncomfortable to talk about, but we have to address it. So I might be talking about this for a little bit longer, um, but I, I I can't summarize this article too much, which, and, and it would and would not be fair to um, to what happened to Miss Tara Reid when she was sexually assaulted by Joe Biden. So this is an article piece. This is an opinion piece from the uh, Guardian. You can see all our show notes in our description box below. Um, and I'm going to just start it off again. Uh, your discretion is advised. Uh, critics of Tara Reid, the woman who has accused Joe Biden of sexually assaulting her in 1993 when she was a staff assistant in a Senate office, claim that if her story were credible, she would have told it sooner and the mainstream media would have covered it. In, in fact, as her tweets and emails to reporters, media outlets, politicians, and organizations demonstrate, Reid has been trying to tell her story for nearly a year. Let that sink in for a minute, everyone. She's been trying, trying to tell her story for a year but was ignored or turned away. Hmm. Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, where are you at? Uh, This is why she wound up telling her story publicly for the first time to me on my podcast. I'm an independent writer and podcaster. I don't hide my politics, nor am I an objective investigative reporter with the resources of a legacy publication. But in March, a friend, herself a sexual assault survivor, said she'd spoken to a woman named Tara Reid who had told her a credible story about being sexually assaulted by Joe Biden and asked me to speak with her. I agreed to speak with Reid and the people she said she told uh, the alleged assault at the time. And if her story seemed credible, I'd do my best to put her in touch with a journalist who could do her who, who could do her story justice. I spoke to Reid and her confidants and reviewed documents. There seemed much to Reid's story, and I moved ahead uh, to find her help. Uh, so it, uh, she goes on to say how the intercepts Ryan Graham broke the Christy Bailey Ford allegation against Brett Kavanaugh was already working on a piece on Reed focused on Time's Up, the nonprofit uh, founded to support women in telling their Me Too stories and its refusal to help her. Right wing reporters were showing interest in the story, but neither I nor Reed, a lifelong Democrat who identifies as a progressive feminist, want her story and the Me Too movement weaponized to help Trump because I believe Reed and because no one else she had reached out to had agreed to interview her, I released my interview a day after Grimm published his article. And again, she goes into quotes. This is very difficult to talk about, but we need to know. People need to know. He, being Biden, just had me against the wall and his hands were on me and underneath my clothes. And then he went down my skirt and then up inside it and he penetrated me with his fingers. Everyone shattered in that moment. Reed's good friend, Jane, not her real name, who lived at the same residence and in interred for another uh, senator at the time, told me that Reed called her after the incident. When I said, did you feel like you could walk away? Tara said no, and that his hand went where it shouldn't below the belt. He said something that made Tara feel like a grain of dust, small and insignificant. On the phone, you couldn't see someone's facial expression, but you could tell when someone's voice is shaking. She was definitely confused, disoriented. Reed's brother also remembered learning about the incident. First, my mom told me about it. She was up in arms, and I was like, I don't know what happened. I think my sister was trying to spare me. I remember my sister being specifically asked to handle a gym bag, and there was a moment when he had her up against the wall and made a hand move under her clothes. I want to, again, this is a woman who was assaulted by the Democratic nominee. And look, I believe in due process. Uh, Just because everyone has this uh, Trump derangement syndrome, um, it doesn't give him a pass, okay? There's seven other women that have made similar accusations against former Vice President Joe Biden, who's now the Democratic nominee. Uh, To the former Democratic candidates, was it worth it dropping out of this race because Obama told you a nice story or gave you some honey words? Because you're going to have to live with this now. I want to also point out that it took the New York Times uh, 19 days to cover Reed's story. The article originally reported that it found no pattern of sexual misconduct by Mr. Biden beyond hugs and kisses and touching women that previously said made them uncomfortable. You could go on YouTube to see all that. After the publication, the second part of the sentence was deleted at the behest of the Biden campaign. Oh, wow. So the media is just jumping backwards for Biden. As the paper's executive editor actually admitted, the campaign thought the phrasing was awkward and made it look like there were other instances in which he had been accused of sexual misconduct. There's seven other incidences. Huh? Washington, New York Times. Do, do your homework. Uh, the Washington Post, Democracy Dies in Darkness, uh, which took 20 days to report on the story, managed to misquote a police report Reed filed as saying she disclosed that she believes she was a victim of sexual assault, but the words she believes didn't appear in the actual police report. The two interns at Times interviewed uh, 
corroborated Reed's allegation that she was removed of her duties, supervising them in retaliation, she claimed, for reporting earlier sexual harassment. The Times did not include a response from the campaign on her demotion. While Biden's campaign has denied the sexual assault allegation, he has not. Hmm. In the dozen media uh, events, including a town hall, since the story broke, not a single reporter has asked him about it. Huh. Again, double standard. Now here, I just want to read this final paragraph, and that'll be that. Tara wants Biden to step down, understandably, as do others who see him as a disastrous candidate. That is true. Others wish Tara has been has been listened before uh, Biden was the last man standing, but now seem see no alternative. Both positions are understandable, and neither should be shamed. But what is shameful is ignoring or belittling Tara because it's politically inconvenient to grapple with her story. So again, me too. Time's up. Hey. I think it's time for you to start talking and really questioning and holding sleepy, creepy Uncle Joe Biden accountable. Just because everyone's afraid of Trump, I get Trump's a horrible person, but this is the guy that's going to beat Trump? He's got not one, eight accusations. Corporate media, I know you guys like to have access, but you know, you're know you still somewhat journalists. You could do your job, but wait, I'm asking you too much. I, that that's too much for you guys to do because you're so afraid. And remember your corporate owners will never let you ask any questions. Guys, take it away. So there's a couple different things on this that I want to talk about. First of which is of course, the fact that when it was Kavanaugh that was brought up, that was broken. Uh, the story was broken by the intercept. The Democrats are like, Oh yeah, this is all the information we need. We have a credible source that has shown this and then we got to go with it. <laughs> But when the exact same person at the exact same publication comes after Biden, they're like, nope, we, we need more time. We don't know. No one credible's talked about it. Also want to point out the blatant uh, like servism. I'm not sure like like uh, an exact word for it that the New York – it's just the submissiveness of the New York Times. And the New York Times is like, oh, yeah, we're the paper of records, but we'll do whatever you say. That's fine. Yeah, we'll do that. Also, to what I said when this was first coming out, or at least it was being first talked about by – some people, and again, when they cover the story, he mentioned the put with the with the Washington Post. They're not even covering it properly. They're not even covering it with any thoroughness. It's like one article done, gone. Um, that this is hypocrisy. This is what I despise in current media. It's this: I pick this team. I'm with Team Red. I'm with Team Blue. So when the exact same set of set of facts happen with one person, I'm gonna act differently. When the exact same ha set of facts happen with someone else. So you have these groups that go after Kavanaugh and they go after Trump. And my response to that when that happened is good. And now that it's Biden, they're like, we don't have enough evidence. We're not sure it happened. The allegations aren't that credible. We shouldn't talk about it. Here's the reality of what's happening. The democratic and liberal papers and politicians that have claimed for years and years that have gone with me too and said when it was republicans when it was trump that was the boogeyman all women need to be believed they were i had issues with the certainty of that statement back then i've always been consistent where i say all women de deserve to be heard and treated fairly and investigated with actual resources mm -hmm. but i don't believe all humans on anything now again you look at the exact defenses that people had with Kavanaugh, the exact defenses that people had with Trump. They are the defenses that the Democrats are now using. They are exactly what they are fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Jose. Um, the leadership there. I mean, uh, I mean, Trump is a horrible person. What, um, what Tara Reid is um, saying Joe Biden um, did to her, and I believe her, um, I do think that the statement "believe all women" um, is a is a powerful one that jars you into a reaction, um, and it should. And I think that it does it um, implicitly to to make you need to react on the side. And I do think that you should err on the side of believing women. And uh, the reason Trump is so horrible is because he openly bragged about what Joe Biden is denying doing. Um, well, he's not even denying doing it. His people are denying it for him because it's that horrible. Uh, by, Donald Trump uh, bragged about doing this not to his staffers or, or to pe women that he knew, to strangers that would come up to him and be enamored by his celebrity. Just grab him. <laughs> um, grab him down there. 
you know, and they'll love it and they won't do anything and nothing bad's going to happen to you. And he's right. Nothing happened has happened to him. And the Republican Party um, unilaterally has chosen to defend him and that type of behavior as, well, maybe it's not presidential, but that's not why I'm voting for him for president. Um, same is true of Brett Kavanaugh. You know, he's a guy who liked beer and might have, you know, participated in gang rape and uh, and and encouraged it. And uh, and the Republican Party as a whole decided as a culture they're cool with that happening in Ivy League schools. Yeah. Now, the Democratic Party says they have a problem with that. They're failing and demonstrating that they have a problem with that right now is really what the outcry is. And I really don't wish to weaponize Ms. Reed's story, but the fact that she has gone to such lengths for it not to be weaponized by the right wing media to be used as a cudgel in such a cynical way uh, and has gone to these lengths instead to go to progressive reporters in which she trusts her, her personal uh, uh, story with, her personal life with, uh, in order to be heard at this opportune moment is really um, the, the part of the story that's never going to go away for the New York Times, never going to go away for the Wall Street Journal, mm -hmm. never going to go away for CNN. Yeah. Um, this was someone that was part of the very culture, that was a victim of the very culture that you said you were out to rectify. Um, and it is disappointing to hear that figures like Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris were, were silent about it. But it speaks really in my, and I'm getting a little on my soapbox now, but it's just, you know, this is a topic that is definitely needs to be unpacked all the way through the election um, because the Me Too movement as an institution, as an organization might have failed, but the Me Too movement as a movement, I don't think necessarily um, is failing in the sense that uh, Joe Biden might be brought down by this, and he should be. Um, it is having powerful people uh, like Trump uh, be said, you know what? Yeah, there are men like Trump that might get the job done and they might go kill the bad guys, but not going to get medicine to your family in time. They're not going to mm -hmm. bail you out of your rent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they certainly aren't going to be there with a manufacturing jobs, no matter how much bullshit they said about immigrants taking them away. So if that's who you want as president because he talks tough, uh, you and your family kind of deserve to die of the plague. It's kind of what the world looking at the U.S. right now should be feeling, I think. Um, so I think that the Me Too movement is not hypocritical, and I don't think that it's a failure. I think that right now it's really where it's going to shine through and which allies they've won out and then which hypocrisy they're not going to put up with anymore. I don't I, think that in and of itself it will bring down Joe Biden, but I think it's something that will really speak to the culture of power mm. um, at a time where we're looking at how much the, the very heights of power have failed us all on this planet. Yeah, I would so, I would also add on like the fact, OK, so as an organization, you know, I, I agree like it, it can do a lot of good. I just think the people running that organization need to be stepped down because she did go to them. She did go to uh, Time's Up and yeah, Harry did, 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 right, did, did so. go to yeah. Senator Elizabeth Warren, you know, for a long time. Some mm -hmm. people were propping her up as like the next Bernie Sanders or something or Kamala Harris. I mean, those two. You would think that they would be leading the charge, but no, all the Democratic candidates, you know, at the end of the day, all of them are going to have to live with the fact that they just endorsed a guy with eight sexual allegations of assault, harassment, and abuse. All the Democrats, including you, Bernie Sanders, including you, Representative Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, this is the guy that's going to beat Trump. I mean, at this, because see, I'm, I'm, why I'm furious and angry is that this is somebody that, you know, Biden, the vote blue, no matter who people are just rallying around saying we got to stop Trump because Trump's this big, bad guy. And he's done a lot of horrible things. Joe Biden has done horrible things as well. And the very fact that people, especially those in power of me too, and time's up are willing to turn a blind eye and are basically trying to silence Tara Reid with the help of corporate media enrages me. It's a fact where I have to question the, you know, the stability and the, really the long lasting impact of these organizations. But you are right, Jose, that these organizations do go, do do good. I just think leadership needs to be removed. And also we have to kind of really hold the politicians accountable, too, because the Democrats uh, have just basically shown their hypocrisy as well. Daniel, it's the final word. Yeah. And I think, so, Chris, or Jerome, you want to add? Into it. Yeah, the just last time bit. we talked about this, this also is perfect. The way that the the way. By trying to hide these allegations now, 
all that the Democrats are doing is giving Trump fuel later. Because yeah. if right mm-hmm. now, like I said this a month ago or whenever it was, if right now all the major news stories like, okay, look, we're going to spend a week talking about this. We're going to interview all the people. And then we're going to come to our natural conclusion, just like when police officers investigate themselves and say there's an inconclusive amount of evidence. There are claims. There are a, there's a smaller amount of claims. That are, the, the, however, they want to rationalize that. If they went through that process right now, by the time November happened, it would be the same thing it was for Trump. It would be something in the back mirror that anytime anyone brought it up, they mm-hmm. would just say, hey, this has already been adjudicated. Stop bringing it up. Blah, blah, blah. But the fact that they keep trying to hide it and suppress it, the fact that there is a um, some documents that Joe Biden is I think it's Joe Biden is not is refusing to release or someone about the allegation when uh, it happened the first time that, that he's not releasing until I think after the election. Well, that's one of the be- I can you think of a better rhetorical attack for Trump to hit Biden with Biden's Biden thinks he's such a good guy, but he's yeah. not even released the the documents on the women he abused. He has the control to do it. He's not doing it. Look at him. What a fake. What a fraud. He can go down this exact line. We are in a situation by the way Democrats are dealing with this because when it happened to Trump, Trump just said, I don't give a shit. I don't care. You're, what are you going to do to me? I don't care. No one cares about it. Uh, but now that Biden's doing it the way he does. We are in a situation where Trump can legitimately attack Biden for sexual assault and have the upper hand. But that that's exactly why right. this, like Jose was saying, uh, that he hopes it's going to get unpacked. This is going to get unpacked. This is going to come right around. It's going to come full circle because of the secrecy behind it, because they're trying to suppress it. You know, uh, really, that that's the, the, only, the only final point I want to make here is mm-hmm. when people question me for not wanting to vote for Biden or for anybody else, I mean, just when we just even going through the story here, opinion piece or not, you know, I mean, again, it's, it's airing on the side of, of, you know, these accusations. It's like, hello, let's, let's at least make sure that all of this is, let, let's give due process where, where it needs to be. And like, don't be surprised why I don't want to vote for Biden. I mean, or, or for Trump or whatever. I mean, it's, it's right there in front of your face and you're either just trying to like turn your head away from it. I don't, I don't know who doesn't know this by now, but yeah, by that time, a couple months down the road, Trump is not going to stop talking about it. I'm sure this is going to be an issue that people are going to keep bringing up and keep bringing up until it is brought to the surface. Yeah. Yep. And, and it's true. Really so uh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. It's, I, I think we have to uh, start moving on down to our next story. But I think at the end of the day, what we have to remember is, is that Tara Reid um, did something brave. She chose to step up. And even when there were those in power who could have helped her, you know, just ignore her, she still kept on fighting. And I do believe that here, here's, here's the thing. I believe her story because there's seven other women saying the exact same thing. And I believe that she is due for with due process. I believe that Biden should be held accountable because he is not above the law. And if that upsets the vote blue, no matter who people too bad, so sad. 